Welcome to Not So PG. I'm Brooke Blurt and my pronouns are she and her. I'm Maddie Mills and my pronouns are he and him. And before we get started, we'd like to acknowledge the custodians of the land on which we record. And today, that is the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. Yes. How many, um... The, how many? How many does it take to get to? <laughs> how many licks? Oh, that is a naughty song. Wind. That is a naughty song. <laughs> be pr- appropriate. Yeah, yeah, be appropriate. Sorry, when you said how many, I just went straight to that song. No, I, I was just thinking. You know, one of our first episodes, you said how many nations make up the Euro Nation, and I wanted to remind myself how many do. So it's between twenty six and twenty nine. Wow. Some people say twenty seven. Some people say twenty eight. Some That's people big. say twenty nine. But it is big. It's metropolitan. In Sydney, it's bordered by the Hawkesbury River in the mm-hmm. north, yeah. the Nepean River in the west, the Georges River in the south, and the ocean in the east. Coastline, yeah. The coastline. That yeah. is the Eora Nation. It's so nice to be on Gadigal because, you know, five nations make up the Kulin Nation back on Wiradjuri country and, yes. and Nam. So it's nice to – I just familiarise myself. Yeah. Shall we get into it? Let's do it. Um, so I need to smack you on the hand. Why? Because you've been so self-deprecating today. <laughs> Maddie, as you know, is the most gorgeous man and he has said so many negative things about himself today, which actually had me thinking about going into this episode about mm. how we talk to ourselves. Yes. And we've been so bad today. Oh, we have. Look, I mean, Where's I think- Where's the self-love? I think it comes from insecurities, which everyone has. You know, yeah, we ain't everyone perfect. has insecurities, Everyone's no matter cracked. who you are. <laughs> and I think the more that, like, you, I don't know, the, I, I acknowledge think, that, acknowledge that, the more comfortable you become with it. But um, you want to know something funny? I had um, somebody extremely hot and beautiful over. Um, oh my god, he's just texted me. <laughs> that is a spin out. Um, that's so weird. I just went to mention it and he texted me. So um, I had him over and we caught up, right? There's this guy who I was dating for a few months. And um, I, we wa- I wanted to catch up with him because I'd been thinking about him a lot. And one of the things when we got into the deep convo is he said um, he wanted to know if he was like dramatic. That was his question. And I said, well, what do you think of me? And he said, I don't think you're dramatic, but I think you're insecure. And I was like, Wow. Straight to your face. Straight to my face, which was a good thing. Like, I think that's... Maybe you needed to hear it. Maybe I needed to hear it. Pretty, I mean, ballsy. Ballsy. But I'm glad that he said that because I was like, I've never thought of myself as insecure for some reason. I've thought of myself as like... So it wasn't a projection from him. It was just No, I think I am insecure because he sort of listed some things that I said throughout the relationship that we had. And our relationship was under wraps. Like, we didn't want to sort of let it out too quickly because of certain things that were happening in within both of our worlds. And so yeah. like we, for three months we dated and it was like fun, lots of fun getting to know each other, but he's so hot. Like I can't, I, and this is, <laughs> I hope he doesn't listen to this, but like I just look at him and I'm like, fuck, that is one of the most beautiful men I've ever seen. So maybe you need to look yourself in the mirror. Well, I do all yeah. the time. <laughs> so obviously well, does he tell you how beautiful you are? Yeah, like he gives me compliments and stuff. But like, it was interesting to hear that I that you know someone to tell you that you're insecure. Insecure. And then yeah. I've come in here today and I've definitely I think I've taken it on, haven't I? Because I've been saying things that are a bit well. I mean, it would be quite jarring yeah. personally if someone had said that yep. to me. Um, I've had I've had similar comments, not maybe insecure, but um, someone recently described me. In three words. Yeah. Um, the first word they actually said was confident, oh, which yeah. I sort of rejected the the word because I was like, actually, I think I'm personally insecure. Yeah. And I think sometimes I do project my own insecurities, not at work, probably yeah. more in my personal life. Yeah. Um, but they described me as confident and two other words that I wouldn't describe myself as. Okay. And then the fourth one so was, was proud. So was it a bit of a surprise to hear that? It was. And it's so funny how people see you on the outside, right? And they, oh my the, God. how they perceive you and how you perceive yourself. Yeah. That's... And sometimes I think that I'm pretty self-aware, but it's yes. something sometimes, it's sometimes when someone says something like he's calling you insecure, that yeah. it can be jarring and it can sort of trigger a, a self-reflection 
moment or even a, uh, you know, a moment where you feel you're like attacking yourself, like kind of self self deprecating yeah. and and self sabotaging. Yeah, yeah. I think you know it's so funny when you said you know that um you about how people perceive us and you know you wish you knew how people perceived you. I think about my superhero power, and if I had to choose mm. one, it would be to be a mind reader, because I'd love to know what's going through your minds right now without me, without you telling me. You know, what you think about someone, what people think about you. You walk past them in the hallway. Mm. What does that person think about me? What did they just, what went through their mind? What they didn't voice? Like, wouldn't that be a great superpower? So I think I would, <laughs> I would choose invisibility if I could, oh, to be fair with you. <laughs> don't. <laughs> I would, absolutely. No um, like and I would choose, cloak. you know what my super, and I've always said this, mm. my superpower would be the ability to take people's pain away. Oh, because that's I think so much that, nicer than mine. Yeah. I feel terrible no, now. No. Even more <laughs> self-deprecating. What a selfish motherfucker. <laughs> so See, I'm, and you here just, I am yeah, like, you just self-proclaim you, yourself as selfish. You, but here I, I am would like, think I just want to know what people think about me. And you're like, I want to take people's pain away. <laughs> you know, a good no, person you are. <laughs> I, well, I try to be. Like, but then how I perceive myself is that yeah. when someone spends time with you, they, so I'm newly seeing someone and they're actually kind of hilariously a performance analyst. So they analyze people's what they, what, performance. What sort of performance? Sport. Oh. Yeah. Rugby, Cardio. actually. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Cardio. God, I'd be terrible. <laughs> um, she's a sprinter, not a long runner. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I mean... He's like, he's like. I'm thinking about it. Anaerobic fitness. I, I really want to start swimming. Swimming in what? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Oh god, cool. I've taken the content to another level, haven't I? Yeah, wow. I think I took it there, and then you took it. Yeah, further. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Um, we do bounce off each other like but that. Look, I taken it back. Rewind. <laughs> rewind. Go back to um the PG content. No, um, I think that like I've wanted to start. A, I don't know why I'm talking about swimming, but why are we talking about cardio? No, uh, so I was, okay, so then, so yeah, the new person I'm seeing is a performance an analyst. And yes. so they analyze my behavior quite a bit. Oh, fuck that. Unwillingly, like, I mean, like, Does unconsciously. Does he just sit there like, mm, mm, Not exactly, mm. but they're very, um, Calm and quiet, which is funny because I would describe myself as that. But they also bring up the bubbly side of me, which is kind of. I fun. think a word definitely. If it, there were three words, calm. You're calming. Calming. Yeah. yeah. I think you bring a calm, to, and I need to talk to you about why I brought you up in therapy. Yes, we'll get into that. Okay. Yes. So, so there was three words that he described to me as. Yes. And it's so funny because we've spent maybe. We've known each other for a while, but no, spent little time together. Mm -hmm. And for him to make that assumption or to make that analysis about me was like, wow, okay, like that's not how I would see myself. Yeah. So it's crazy how we pick each other, pick ourselves apart. And recently, you know, we we wanted to talk about therapy, and so sort of going into that, I kind of had a bit of a a reality check from my therapist actually, which is kind of nice, which is yes. uncommon sometimes, yeah. was I started talking about myself in a way which was quite self-deprecating mm -hmm. and he was like, I said to him, no, so I was like, looked at him and said, you need to tell me that, um, you know, you need to be harsh on me. And he was like, no, I don't. And I would never, like, that's not my role in this situation. And it was kind of like, obviously. But then told me, would you talk to someone else the way that you talk to yourself? Mm. And I think that's a really good reflection is that in the morning when I wake up, I'm yeah. like, go, bitch. Yeah. Like, go, bitch, go. Yeah. <laughs> and the way that I talk to myself sometimes is like an actual piece of shit. Oh, and I think, I hate that. why am I doing that? Yeah. I would never talk to my girls like that. I would never talk to my family like that. I would never talk to you like that yeah. or anyone. So I was like, why am I saying to myself, get the fuck up, 
get going, get it done. And I'm just like so ruthless. Like it's like go, go, go. Don't don't stop. Get it done. You're a piece of shit. Work on it more. Work harder. Like all of these things. And I'm saying you're ugly. I look at myself in the mirror. I'm like, oh, I've got a fucking pimple on my head. Like fuck's sake, my skin yeah. shit. Are all these of these thoughts negative things. Or are these out loud? Both. Both. I... I, like, have so many mirrors in my house that Mm. at at one stage in the week I just could not look in the mirror. And I was like, why can't I look in the mirror today? And I was like, because I look at myself and I don't see what everyone else sees. I just see that I'm – I've obviously got some type of, like, body dysmorphia or some way in my head that I don't see – what I look like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'll, yeah, I'll notice. And we, we do that as humans, right? We yes. go to the negative. We always go to the negative. Yep. Negative. We need to stop doing that. I agree. We need to show ourselves compassion and love. And to hear my therapist say that, like. Yeah. Would you, <laughs> would you talk to somebody else the way that you're speaking to yourself? Yeah. yeah. And the answer is no. Yeah. It's a really good way to keep yourself on track, like with being positive influence on yourself right and like yeah, being because good if you're to not yourself being kind, and kind yeah. to yourself yeah that's and that's i think what starts with that because like whatever you're dealing with internally you're gonna naturally project that mm-hmm. out yeah. like it can't contain itself for too long you know yeah. what i mean and so i've been feeling pretty shitty for the last couple of weeks yeah and you know i'm doing something about it yes. and the first thing was to go into therapy yeah well we'll i'm proud of you i'm proud of you because i think that therapy is like for me it has to be and i've made this decision that is it is a long term commitment i feel like for years i've totally pushed everything to the back of my mind and i've jumped over these hurdles and haven't focused on unpacking anything and it's like it's become so apparent because i'm making um decisions really based on like like short-term goals and short-term like outcomes instead of long-term and for me I'm like I really need to like have- you're cycling well yeah I you're think just kind I- of like a duck underwater just paddling yes and I feel like I'm just going around in circles and making the same mistakes and going you know into into the the sort of the wrong feelings and emotions and like not being able to really grab hold of anything yeah and not being able to sit with the emotion or the feeling of something I have had these amazing moments in therapy lately where I've had revelations and it's like all about the younger version of myself mm. and about like the what experiences that I went through between like the really young ages of my life and um, the experiences that I have with my mother. And it's so weird because forever, no matter what my mum did, I always felt like I could see past it, forgive, give show empathy, um, understand, be compassionate and since unpacking these moments that like of of these things that happened when I was a kid, I've become really angry at my mum, <laughs> like wild. Mm. And not to her face because I um, wouldn't do that and hurt her, but like behind the scenes, like I'm really disconnected from her emotionally. And it's because I'm living in the land of five-year-old Maddie. Mm. And one of the um, really powerful things that my therapist asked me to do is that I need to... Imagine that five-year-old Maddie is in my house, right? It is in my apartment. And whatever decision I make as a human being has to, has impact on five-year-old Maddie. Mm. So making sure that everything that you do, every decision you make, every um, thing that comes into your life or out of your life, you know that that's going to impact the child and you have to look after five-year-old Maddie. And it's been like this really powerful um, tool because why five year old Maddie? Because when I was five year old, I found myself like I've I, like when I think about five year old Maddie, I was like a lost little puppy dog who would literally walk around and look for my mum. So I would walk from house to house looking for my mum, trying to find her. And oh my it God, happened, that breaks my heart. And it happened all the time, mm. you know. And it was like this mission to try and get her to come home. So it was like I'd walk to these these people's house, which was, you know, maybe down the street, and begging her to come home just so that, like, mm. she would be at home with us. And it was always just 
trying to find her. So as a young kid, my life was just walking around the suburbs trying to find my mum. And still to this day, the exact same thing happens. If I want to see my mum, I have to drive to a certain suburb and drive around the streets of the suburb and look in the parks to see if I can find my mum. It hasn't changed. Yeah. So, like, I need to work through the emotions of that and the, and put up some strong boundaries because, like, mm. I am also feeling like what I saw as a kid is, like, and the lack of consistency has really come into my life as an adult. Yeah. And, like... I've, Which you've spoken about how much consistency is so important for Consistency you, but... is important, but I haven't been able to nail it. Yeah. And the reason I haven't been able to nail it and be consistent... Um, and people might say, oh, but you're a really consistent person. But that's, like... There's these two worlds in my world that I'm really unpacking. There's the work world, which I am hugely consistent at. Like, I'm, like... When it comes to my work, I'm a boss. I, there's nothing that gets between me mm. and the job. But that's because I'm living in this, like, extraordinary world of entertainment and and the th- passion, the thing that you love. So it's like, it's almost like, it's almost like a dreamland, you know, work for me. Yeah, it's like another city and, is what yeah. I would describe it as. It's like that code switching yeah. when you and switch And then the into... personal life yeah. is like this whole other world where I'm battling all these fucking things from my childhood yeah. that just feel like massive challenges. Yeah. And it's like... Man, it's been hard. Like, therapy has been hard. Mm. But I've got an honest therapist who is tough with me, who is straight down the line and will hold a mirror up to myself and be like, well, what I'm seeing is that this is what you experienced as a kid Mm. and this is why you're making these decisions. Isn't this crazy because we started this podcast with the fact, like, based on the fact that we didn't grow up with a lot of parental guidance. No. And I think it's coming out in every episode of moments where we have, like, revelations of why that parental guidance is so important to... Uh, and is key to your adult life yeah. in the way that you build relationships, attachment yes. styles, core yeah. values, beliefs. Yeah. Like, so it's crazy that we, you know, we started this, and you know, we have these moments that it just makes sense to us. Like, yeah. it's like, oh yeah, duh. Like, like we lacked so much as kids yeah. that now we're paying for it. Like, unfortunately, we have to do way more work, like yes. to really get to a position where we feel like all all of those bricks that build up who we are. Yeah. Like we need to fucking knock them down and rebuild ourselves. Yeah. And and that's what's been like so clear to me. And you talk about relationships and like we I know we started talking at the start of this episode about these relationships. Mm. One of the things that I realized is that in my past relationship, there was a huge amount of stability that I was really unfamiliar with. Mm. And so I was constantly trying to find moments of instability which really affected my yeah. relationship. Yeah. And having that revelation of like, fuck, I can't cope with the amount of stability that my ex and his family provided me because Mm -hmm. I had no idea what that was like as a kid. Yeah, right. You know? Imagine if you did have that, what your life would be like. and It would be so much fucking easier. Yeah. Well, but sometimes, you know, everyone's got their shit, you know, and I think like this as well because it's like, well, you're – when when does the healing stop? Mm. But the thing is, like, the healing never ends. Yeah. You always, have, you know, and I think you should never stop working on yourself. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, finding a good therapist is, is, is great to look or have someone who's an outside perspective. Yeah. Because we haven't had that parental guidance or we haven't had consistent people in our life, like, I couldn't even remember, like... Months ago, maybe even last year, I mentioned that I have a hard time trusting people mm. because I didn't have, I couldn't, I cannot name someone who has been in my life from the day that I was born till now, like consistently been in my life, like has known me every year. I, I'm exactly the same like, as you. Like, I couldn't name anyone. Yeah. Um, that my has shown up obviously, and shown consistency yeah. and been there for you. Yeah, my mum's yep. past, my dad's um, never been that consistent. Yeah. My nana's passed away, uncles and aunties. Like, they're all, you know, passed on or 
um, you know, something's happened. Like it's just crazy to think that I've never had someone who's so consistent that's been every single yeah. day. And I'm not saying you need to see these people every single day, but no. at least, you know, seeing them every year. It's or, a thread through your life. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So um, I had huge trust issues with letting people in, which I've definitely worked on and I've become more trusting and, and have always been really forgiving, mm-hmm. um, even if people have been deserving or haven't been deserving of it. Yeah. Um, but I learned through therapy, I think that this is the biggest thing for me that I've learned in therapy. Um, and this was in my early stages because when I was, uh, younger, I was, I went mute for two years, which I've spoken about yeah. on a previous podcast, um, about those two years and what that was, was like. Basically, I had a da- dad that really despised me. Like I'd never felt like my dad wanted me yeah. and I don't really hold on to that because he has done it to his other children. So for me in my head, but also it, it doesn't make it better that he's not a consistent dad, but it makes it better it's in my personal. mind that knowing that it's not me, yeah. it's his issue. Yeah. So he needs to deal with that mm-hmm. and I need to deal with whatever I'm going on. Yeah. And the thing was, and the thing is, he's an adult. Mm-hmm. I was a child. Yeah. And the the saying that I love in, and I live my life um, and I have it on my computer is basically I did the best with what I had with and what I could do. You know what I mean? Have so you seen I, that meme of Mariah Carey? I'm going to do the best with what I got. Basically, <laughs> I'm... Like she's, she's so drunk behind the DJ and she's about <laughs> to start singing and she's like plastered. But that saying is like, I did the best. Like yes. I was a kid, yeah. I did the best with what I could. Yes. And I tried and mm. I got to here. I'm here now, yeah. right? And I think for me was learn- on that journey in high school and into my adult life is learning to, um, the thing is let them, if mm. they want to do that, if they want to say shit about you, they want to talk about you, they don't want to be in your life, let them. Let them. Like that is theirs. There's nothing to do with you. You yep. can only do what you do. And the other thing is um, not holding on to anger um, and allowing their room to just forgive people. Yeah. Even if they've done shit to you. Like it's easier for me in my mind to just be like, okay, I don't forgive you but I'm like – letting that situation be what it was mm. and I'm not choosing to, like, interact with it anymore. Okay. Like, in in some degree. Yes. Um, but, like, the let them for me is, like, the biggest thing because I'm like, well, I had no choice back then. I was yeah. just letting people do shit to me and, you know, I had no choice. But now yeah. I'm an adult, I'm like, I have choice in that and I have options and I have voice. Yeah. Um, anyway, so... They're my two things, but I think, like, the consistency of a really stable parent, obviously, and having the lack of, yeah, does really, really affect you in your adult life and yeah. how you deal with relationships. Yeah. Um, and I'm always in therapy, but I'm always healing. Mm. And I feel like, you know, I'm so proud of you for taking that step in that journey. Well, because- I remember calling you, remember, and I was <laughs> like, look... I just feel like I'm just going around in circles yeah. and I feel like I'm in this position. I think I was pretty harsh with you. But you were good. And, <laughs> but you, but you, but you also, I? I think you were harsh, but you also uh, like allowed me to see the other side to it. Like it was like, yes, like you, you might be having this really tough time now, but like think about all the great things that are happening in your life. Because I, I know that when I get into these moments of like, fuck man, like why aren't I my best self? I can disregard all the all the good things, you know. And for me, therapy has been like I do it every week, every week on a Friday because I need consistency in this area. I need I need help mm-hmm. to be able to really make my brain strong in certain areas. And like I just don't want to be a, another generation of what I went through with my family, which I know I won't. And that sounds extreme, but like. Sometimes you don't realise how close you are to certain things that are really destructive, you know, Yeah. in your world. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. there's just like patterns and ways of um, ways of operating in the world that can be really like destructive to you. And I'm like, my mum's really mean, 
like I'm not a mean person, but my mum's mean and she's cutthroat. And I'm like, I want to be so far from who my mum is mm. that it's like, like I don't want to see her in me at all, you know. And I'm I'm working on that. And that's on a dig to my mum because my mum went through fucking hell. Mm. Like she. Her experiences her shaped experiences her. Her experiences yeah. were so traumatic. Not to bring up another quote or like a, yeah. another saying, but it's like that you know, everyone is fighting a battle you know nothing about. Yes. So always, like, be kind. Yeah. For me, that's one of the things that, you know, whatever people are projecting onto you, sometimes it's just, like, better to just understand that they're obviously having a day, they're having an experience, like, that's their experience, and then not to take it on board. But yeah. if you're an empathetic person, like, I guess we are in some yeah. way, both of us, it's, like, yeah. hard to not do. Like, even with my psychologist, and when he's talking to me about his experiences, it's so hard not to take on his shit as well. Yeah. But, like, I just call him out for it. I'm like, yeah. bro. <laughs> I'm this like, is about me. <laughs> <laughs> this is about me, not you. I'm not paying I'm you paying $300 you. to talk about you. you so uh, great let's about, make this snappy. <laughs> well, you know what's great about my therapist? He's an older queer man yeah. and <laughs> he was in the industry. Before yeah. he was a psychologist. So he understands the pressures of this world mm. that I put on myself and that sometimes you feel from other people. But, yeah. like, therapy for me has just been an eye-opener and I'm coming out of it every time because I sort of write as I am in the session. You journal, yeah. And, I'm, yeah. and I come out of it and I go, wow, like, there is so much to just unpack. But I also want to share this experience because I feel like people yeah, get to, like, a dark corner in their lives and they're like wow, this is fucking heavy, this is dark. Yeah. There is absolutely a way out and there's a way out because what mm. you learn you can unlearn, you know? Yeah, well, like we said, you know, you might feel like you're repeating patterns Yeah. and sometimes you might need extra support or someone to sort of hold up a mirror to yourself and maybe make you realise, like, what is the what are those patterns yeah. of behaviour? I mean, one of my patterns was... Dating people that I wanted to fix because I'm a fixer. I'm a helper. That's mm-hmm. in in my nature as a as a job as a person. Like I want to help and fix people all the freaking time. I've never ever dated someone who I've wanted to fix. How weird is that? So different. Yeah, that's so odd. Maybe they want to fix me. Maybe I'm the, I'm the problem. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me, Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe. No, but. Well, yeah, yeah. The I've way your friendship, the way your friends perceive you, like, and the way that your family perceive you, like it's crazy. Because like, my I've asked my family like how they perceive me, and they're like, they're like bossy, uh, motivated, get shit done. Like they're and they're quite positive. Like mm. they're like, you know, I'm a I'm a go getter, hustler. Yeah. Where you know that's it. But yeah. in my mind, I'm like. I'm a fucking lazy bitch. <laughs> I'm fucking, you know, but I'm doing all the things, but yeah. I don't feel like I'm doing all the things. So yeah. it's like you have to l- give yourself some slack. You yeah. actually have to, like, really give yourself. And then my friends will say I'm um, very loving. I give yeah. my time too much to people that don't deserve yeah. it. Yeah. These are the, the, I'm just reiterating, like, yes. what they've said. Because I sometimes just ask them straight out. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm pretty straight out. I'm like, what do you think of me? Like, just yeah. tell me to my face, yeah. you know? And I, I and I think, yeah, people would perceive that as confident, yeah. but I'm just like, I'm actually digging for information. Yeah, you're trying to figure <laughs> it out yourself, right? Yeah, I'm like, I'm analysing myself and I think I need to stop analysing myself. I am self-aware. Mm. Like, let's just park it at that yeah. and just say, all right, cut myself some slack. Like, well, Speaking let- of cutting, therapy's taught me I need to cut people out. There you go. Have you had, had that experience in therapy where you're like, <laughs> Fuck, man, I don't have any boundaries. I'm a yes person. I'm a people pleaser. Yeah. I allow people just to take me on the ride of their life. So are you – this is the this is the analogy that I will tell you now. Mm. Are you in the back of the bus just getting taken for a ride or are you the driver in the seat? You know what? I live in two worlds. It's like there's two – I'm a Gemini. There's two worlds. Work world, I'm the driver. I'm the fucking driver in this professional world, right? <laughs> I'm like – Got two hands on the wheel and I'm good. In my personal life, I'm at the back of the bus with my seat on the feet, looking out the window, probably smoking a dart. Like a seat on the feet? <laughs> exactly. Confused. I'm confused. I'm absolutely confused and not in control. Like my personal life to He's me. Delulu. He's I'm Delulu. It. It's like the opposite of my professional life. And I'm like trying to so the work that I'm doing is I'm trying to bridge the two. Because this world is like a, I feel like a persona world and it doesn't feel real, but it feels 
in control. And this world over here is like the lost little five-year-old boy looking for his mum. And so it's Stop. like how do I bridge those worlds and make them less separate and more like connected so that there's a balance, you know? I think what I've taken from that, obviously I, in my mind I pictured. <laughs> taken from that you're still fucked up. <laughs> no, is I, I drew a Venn diagram in my head yes. when you said that. I said this is one world, yeah. this is another world. Yes. And in the middle that's like the, the perfect ideal Maddie of yeah. what you want. Yeah. That's not right. Like, yes. And you, okay, perfect example as to why you came up in therapy is because I sh- he was like, does anybody know both of those people? And I said, Brooke. And, I, and he was like, like as in both those people, as in both of those worlds, who's experienced both of them at once? And I was like, my co-host Brooke. So I feel like she knows the ma- personal Maddie, the professional Maddie, and that middle bit, which is like the, both of them together. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, it's so funny. that." You, and that. sometimes you need just one of those people. And you know what's so funny about it? He's like, whose world do you see as a world that has those both of those worlds? And he's like, admirable to you and I was like my co-host Brooke I was like that is so crazy. like your world to me is like where I want to get to in terms of calmness how mm, funny is that that's so funny I know. I'm like and I admire your because we've work. gone through the same yeah. shit yeah. and I'm like how did she get to be like she worked on herself she did the work I did the work you know and so it's like I see your world and I'm like wow we went through like a lot of similar shit and here she is is like calmly floating through the world but it's but that's my experience and how I perceive you that's how you perceive me exactly yeah. right? and it's crazy because that's like the Not how you... chaos in my mind is so yes. different but and I, and I have things that I admire around you know your work ethic yeah. and how you do things and how I need to be more out like even tonight like we're hosting our one of our jobs together which we've hosted yes. before yeah and I'm like, okay, I need to channel Maddie because I need to be outgoing and I need to do this. And yeah. I'm not – I'm typically an outgoing person for yeah. work. Yeah. But it doesn't come first nature to me yeah. where it probably does come a bit more natural yeah, to you. Yeah, it's my bread and butter. Yeah, and it's know? crazy yeah. how we both have that contrast. Yeah. Um, but I think you need to be one for giving more of yourself because mm. I know that, you know – whatever that Maddie in the middle is and whatever you're seeking as your five-year-old self, like you already have it in you and you already have it there and you already have, I'd say, a really good supportive network around you that more just more people like me that see both of those people that you can trust and lean into and a lot of people actually do struggle with that and they don't have that and I always feel really bad that people don't have those supports. Yeah. Um. But yeah, cut yourself some slack. I mean, oh. in, in my world, the it's the the aunt, you know your the, your five year old self searching for your mum and looking and like, what are you really looking for? And yeah. that's what I think. I'm like, what is he looking for in, yes. in my mind? Because that's my help fix it brain. It's like, about- I want to fix Maddie, yeah. but you you don't need to be fixed. Yeah, you're on a healing journey, yeah. and the thing is, it will never become healed. Yeah. We're like those, you know, those crash plates where they you know, they break and they come back together and yeah. they won't ever be perfect again. Yeah. But they have the cracks the, and the, the scars, gold, yeah. Yeah, the gold cracks, yeah. which I think in my mind is way more beautiful than just a plate, a plate like a boring yeah. plate. Like yeah. a, it's got a story. It's got a, you know, we. I always think we're all sort of damaged goods. Yeah. You're never going to get someone or even be in a relationship with someone or meet someone, I don't think, who's... Yeah. Ideally, perfect, pure, in any way. I agree. I think everyone has got their insecurities. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so what I was saying, like, what are you searching for? Me, like mm. little Brookie, and yeah. what she's searching for is um, the that you know what I defined as like once upon a time, like in my bachelorette days, was that unconditional love. Yeah. But what I didn't realize at the time is that I already actually had it and I had it from the day that I was born is yeah. because I had to grow up basically loving myself to get me where I was. Totally. If I didn't love myself, my life would have probably ended years ago. Yeah. Because I know what it's like to hit rock bottom. Yeah. And I've done the work, like you said. Like yeah. I've put myself through the absolute fucking ringer Mm. and I was so self-deprecating. The way that I am now, this was not me 10 years ago. When I was 18, I was super fragile, like 
you could say boo and I'd fucking fall over. Yeah. Like I've had to build myself up and build those little bricks and therapy has been a huge part of that. Yeah. And I now because I've kind of in my eyes fixed myself, mm. like I say fix in quotation, um, I haven't quite fixed myself. I probably was never needing – well, yeah, I probably was needing to be fixed. But, yeah, but, but it's I needed about, support. Like, I needed help. It, right? I needed love. I needed compassion. Yeah. I needed care. Yeah. I needed to nurture myself before to build myself up. So now that I'm in a position that I can do the work that I was set out to do, yeah. the one thing that I don't want to fucking do is continue to try and fix people that I want to fuck. <laughs> I love that. You know what? It's that's that's something that I feel like you have this like weird mission to do. And I don't know if that's your kink or anything, but you know, like each to their own. No, I'm kidding. But um I think it's about the Maybe fa- it is my weird no, kink. No, I think that you've seen so many broken human beings in your life that like you have done the work to get yourself to a really solid point where you feel like you can give the skills and you can help someone get to their best self. But it's not your job. You've held a lot. You've held a lot throughout your life. You've carried heavy weights forever. Like, mm. you don't want another heavy bag on your back. Like, let that shit go. Find someone who is light, mm. like you are now, and float through the sky together. Don't go fucking piggybacking them around trying to fix them. <laughs> Amen, brother. <Okay>. No. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No. Um, but what I wanted to say, like, the last thing that I wanted to say is that, like, therapy what I've realised, and this is to do not just with therapy but with life, is that, like, we have these goals and these end moments that we're always trying to strive towards. Yeah. And what I realised is that, like, nothing feels like it should when you get there. So even if you get to your goal, it doesn't feel like you've accomplished something, right? All the little moments that you've had Mm. from the moment you started until the moment you get there is the actual gold. And so, like, the process, for instance, therapy, the process, every week when I turn up to therapy, the process is what I'm taking on. There's not going to be an end goal where I go, I'm healed. You can't go into those to- sessions being, like, an expect yeah. an expectation or an expected um, pivotal, like, moment or, yeah. like, I'm going to break down this today. Yeah, and you it's have not to even about enjoy the process. Just therapy. Yeah. It's like about career stuff. I'm like, you know what? Yes. I need to feel myself through this. I need to really have like moments in the in the journey instead of just being like, this is the end goal and this is what I want to do. Fuck the end goal because when you get to the end goal, there's another goal. Exactly. And so you're never ever going mm. to be you're never going to get the sense of um, accomplishment. Mm. Through those bigger moments, it's actually about the little things. I agree. You know? There's this book which I suggest. I think um, I haven't read it personally yet, mm. but has what has been suggested to me. It's something like 500 weekends or something like that. Yeah. And in our life, we only get, or in our life, sorry, I think it, I think it's weeks, maybe. Yeah. Um, we only get a certain amount of weeks and weekends, and yeah. it's like how you spend your time because no, and it talks to um your career, like working towards something and continuously the working harder is good and yeah. to work hard is, you know, like great. Yeah. You know, I get joy out of working hard. Yeah. But it's the moments where you need to sort of also prioritise when you're not working and you reset and yeah. rezone and because – Work is always going to be there in some degree. I mean, mm-hmm. this and I'm, this is an overgeneralization, but like, if you're always working, work's coming in faster. Yeah. So you're always working for it to come back faster. Yeah. And I get like working efficiently. I'm an efficient queen. I love that. But where's the moment where you enjoy it? And mm-hmm. where's the you know the, the I get this sense of accomplishment. I get yeah. that. Yeah. I thrive in that. But also, I I think for for me, my Early stages of my life, I was in fight and flight, mm-hmm. and now I'm out of survival mode. I'm learning to actually like res- kind of heal that inner child, but understand that I don't need to do things at a hundred and ten percent pace. Yeah, I can do it. I can. What I now <laughs> prioritize yeah. is that as soon as that five p.m. hits, I'm running at a zero point five. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm going. Like I'm still doing things. Yeah. But I'm doing it at a 0.5 pace yep. to allow myself to just like 
settle. That's so important. Like, and I think that's more important. But yeah. yeah, sorry. No, I, that's so important. And I think like through therapy, my this is what it's so funny you say this because my therapist said to me, "You live an extraordinary life with what you do." So as mm-hmm. entertainers and in this business, we live at such a high level of chemical imbalance in our body for what we do. Because the adrenaline. The adrenaline, right? And you get addicted to So it. he said, it's what you need to do is the opposite of that. So everything in your personal life has to be ordinary. He's like, you need to literally go for a walk in a park and have that as an ordinary activity. Every day do something extremely ordinary because otherwise your life and the expectation of your body, brain and mind is up here Yeah, because of the work we do. Because it isn't just everyday work. We are constantly living at a level of heightened emotion, heightened experiences, yeah, like crazy things, right? And it's like... Being surrounded by lots of people. Lots lots of of people, attention. Overstimulated, yeah. It's like... To, to combat that and to really get a fucking hold on your life, you need to do ordinary shit. I agree because and I'm like, that also oh my keeps God. you Eye opener. Humble, humble in the experience. He's like, go and buy an ice cream and sit by the beach and literally look at the stars for an hour and just sit there. That's so fucked because I actually did that. <laughs> See? So, okay, oh. healing your inner child, yep. you know how your parents kind of tell you that you can't eat dessert before dinner? Yeah. So this has been instilled in us for like... What are you doing? Are you sitting at home and being rebellious and eating that dessert before dinner? <laughs> well, uh, I was like, got to like five o'clock. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I really want ice cream. Yeah. Like if girls out there, you get your period, you, all you want is ice cream, chocolate, mm. whatever. Uh, you know, you know. So I was like, five o'clock, I really want chocolate ice cream. Mm. And I was like, oh, I don't have any, so I'm going to go for a walk. But I was like, oh, no, no, I don't want to spoil my dinner. Like I've got yep. dinner ready to uh, heat up. And I was like... I'm a fucking adult. I can go down to the fucking gelato store, get myself a fucking ice cream, Uh, and then also eat my dinner. Uh, Why did I think that I couldn't? So, you know, and that also brought me joy, and I obviously went for a walk. And I was like, that, and I was, this, these are things that, like, because you give out so much energy, you have to feel it. You have to. Like, it is, honestly, I hate this thing because it's, like, so overused but you really do have to fill your cup up to yeah. pour out to others yeah. and you've got to have that balance otherwise yep. you're literally burning the candle at both ends oh, and I know you will that fuck one. yourself I know up. that one really exactly. a lot um, you know and I think because in the last couple of months I've learned to learn remember when I was talking about the feeling of loneliness yes and I was saying I'm not um, I'm not alone yeah. But I'm just feeling lonely. Yes. Yes. And then the last couple of Healing months. Healing is of, lonely. What exactly, I've learned. Exactly. Yeah. It is, is by lonely. Cutting off <laughs> and having boundaries and not being a yes person and doing what everyone else fucking says, you become lonely. And I hate being by myself. So this is like, it's hard. It's hard. You get it. Hard. I yeah. get it. I get it. But be- it will pay off. I can yeah. tell you now, I think because then when you are with people, mm. you really value and you really. Um, enjoy being in their presence and you're present in that moment. And I think, you know, that projection, um, people people really feel that and people appreciate that. Mm. So you have to actually do spend some time by yourself and doing the work. Um, It's a hard journey. Well, I feel like we've just had a therapy session. This has been bloody wonderful. I'll invoice you later. Yeah, just send the invoice. I'll send mine. (laughs) (laughs) But that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much, you mob, for being in on our therapy session. If you love us, leave us a five-star rating and a little review. If you want to tell us something, follow us on socials and slide into the DMs. My handle is at brooke.blurton and Maddie's handle is at it's Maddie Mills. And you can follow all of the Nova Podcast action over at Nova Podcast Official. Also, we do know that we just spoke about therapy. So if you do need some support or you do want to talk to someone, there is a line called 13 Yarn for Mob for First Nations people. And you can call Lifeline at 13 11 14 if you need anything. And we'll pop some extra resources in the show notes. But we love you and we're here for you as well. Support. Bye. Bye.